here is the 5011th attempted recording of this video. I don't know why it's so much easier to do this stuff live. I do it live, and it's blaze right through, everything's good. And I record stuff, I'm like, ah, oh, I gotta fix that. My video editing skills suck, so that usually just means take two. So in this video, we're going to talk about sorts, but rather how indexes can help you avoid sorting data. And we're going to do that because there are, there are some things about sorts that we care about. Things that we care about with sorts is one, they will ask for memory. And the size of the memory grant that they will ask for is going to depend on how long your data is, how many rows you're selecting, and how wide your data is how many, what the columns you're selecting and their data types. The bigger your data is, the bigger of the memory grant that sort is going to ask for. Now remember that SQL Server doesn't work with pages on disk, it only works with pages in memory. Those pages that get stored in memory get stored in the buffer pool. And uh, the more, and memory being a finite resource, the more queries you have asking for large memory grants, that, that memory has to come from somewhere. Usually that memory, if you don't have a ton of extra memory on your system, will come from space that it was going to use with a buffer pool. If we, ha we care because if enough queries ask for enough memory, and you run out of query, run out of query memory grant space available for SQL Server, you will hit resource semaphore weights, and th those are not fun weights to run into. If you don't get enough memory for a particular query, it might spill to disk, and when sort spills get large enough, they can be certainly in, uh, become performance problems. They also make your code sensitive to parameter sniffing, the sort of, you know, sort of classic parameter sniffing example. You have one set of parameters that you know, returns a small number of rows. You don't have to sort a lot of data. Then another set of parameters where it returns a lot of rows. It not even returns a lot of rows. It just processes a lot of rows to get you your final result set. And uh, that might need far more memory to run optimally. And that's where you end up with the spilling and the slowness and everything sucks. Uh, and then they're also they're internally blocking. I don't mean that they are blocking other queries, just inside of an execution plan, uh, all the rows have to get to a sort, and SQL Server has to write them all down in order, and then they can pass things on to other rows downstream, other operators downstream, and it's, you know, you just have a bunch of, bunch of operators sitting around waiting for <laughs> that sort to finish and do its thing, potentially. Unless it's at, like, the, all the way to the left of your execution plan, and then well, I guess it doesn't matter. So let's look at how index design can help us avoid sorting data. So I'm going to, well, I can't remember if I created this index or not. I already created it. Good for me. Sweet. This is so long ago, I forgot. But what I want to show you first is uh, for this index, how the data is going to be stored in this index. And I'm going to do it with this query. Now, this I, I'm using this query because it gives me a nice easy set of data to illustrate this point with. So this, this index is on first co the first key column is reputation, the second key column is upvotes, the third key column is downvotes, the fourth key column is creation date descending. We have display name included, which is not going to help us sort data at all because included columns are in no particular helpful order, but we'll get to that later. So th th if, we look, if we think logically about how data is stored in this index, we have a whole bunch of duplicate values for reputation 124. Within that, within this duplicate range of values, we have values for upvotes stored in order next. So this is all 124, and then we have groups of ones, groups of twos, groups of oops, groups of threes, and groups of four, five, six, seven, eight, down on down to ten. All right. So we have 124, then data and upvotes is in order after that. And then within duplicate ranges, or within a range of values and upvotes, we will have downvotes in, in order next. So we, for where upvotes equals one, we have downvotes one, one, two. And then within uh, any, any duplicate range of values here, we will have creation date in descending order here because we have it in descending order in the index. So for 124, we have uh, upvote equals one, and then downvote equals one, and then creation date equals this. So this is how the index is in order stored logically, not physically, logically. 
So if I run these two queries, the first one is just going to say select the top 1,000, those four columns in the index, ordered by upvotes. And the, other, the second one is that same query, but with a, an equality predicate on reputation. If I run these two queries back to back, the first query will have a sort. We have to sort by upvotes to get data in the order we want here. But if we have an equality predicate on reputation, there's no sort operator in this plan. We have an index seek, we have a top operator that's not a top sort, and then we just have a select. So in this query with, with no equality, with no equality predicate on reputation, ordering by upvotes, we now we have to sort data. And this spills a little bit. Not enough for me to get riled up about, but it does it does spill. Which means that logically we can select the top 1,000, those four columns in the index, with an equality predicate on reputation, upvotes, and downvotes, and we can order by creation date descending, and we still will not need a sort operator in the query plan to get the data in the order we want it. Equal equal using equality predicates going across like that means that we can traverse the data just like I showed it to you with that first query, so we find equality values here, equality values here, equality values here, and then by the time we get over to the creation date column, that data is in the order that we want it. That order is preserved. So nice, right? With row store indexes, you have that sort of column to column dependency. It's not true with column store indexes, but that's not what we're going to get to here. But like I mentioned, includes are useless. So even if we have an equality predicate on creation date and we say order by display name, well, we're going to get this one row back, but we're also going to have a sort operator in the query plan. No, this is a top end sort. This is not a, a full, fully sorted thingamabob. Anyway, uh, equalities are also not so kind. So uh, in the or original query where I had reputation equals one, and uh, in this query, we're going to say less than or equal to one or greater than or equal to, I believe that's a million. I'm too lazy to count all those zeros. But if we run these two queries and look at the execution plan, we will have a sort here, top end sort here. And we'll have a sort here, another top end sort. Again, this one spills a little bit, not much. And this one doesn't spill at all because there's a very, very small number of rows <laughs> involved in that one. But uh, so I guess if there's a message here, it's that inequality operators do not handle order preservation as well. There are some funny rules to that though. Let's take uh, these these queries for example where um, I can we're, we're going to filter on we're going to order well all of them are going to order on reputation right all of them are going to order by that first column in the index. These are going to filter on columns that occur later in the index and these are going to be inequality predicates that occur on the reputation column but if we run these queries and we look at the execution plans none of these need to sort None of these will have a sort operator in them, even if we scroll all the way down. All we see here is tops, not top n sorts. So whenever you're designing indexes, a lot, of, a lot of times a rule will be something like, use equality predicates first, man, and then, you know, inequality predicates second, man, and then, you know, include your select list, which is 45 columns, because everyone was too lazy to normalize the table, man. <laughs> um, but I think that the indexing advice should be perhaps a little bit different. So if we if we have queries where we need to um, optimize for sorting data, sometimes I think that it is a wise idea to change uh, the index creation advice to be on equality columns first, and then sorting elements after equality columns, and then inequality predicates, and then your 45 include columns. I'm kidding, don't, please don't use 45 include columns. I will, I will cry. I cry every time. I'm gonna just stop doing that. Just get, stop. There are better ways. There are better ways in the world. Anyway, uh, so that's, that's one way to think about indexes. It's a little bit different from the way that a lot of people think about indexing for things today. Now, uh, there's also times when different ways of writing queries can help you avoid sorting data. So what I have here is an index on the votes table. It's on vote type ID, post ID, bounty amount descending, and creation date. Now this query has uh, a couple predicates in it. One is on vote type ID being in 1, 3, and one is on creation date being greater than or equal to 2010. Now 
the way that this query plan is going to look, which I'll show you in a second, we're going to see seeks for this, and we're going to see uh, a, a thing for that, I, something. So we'll, we'll get to it. But this row number function, right, where we're partitioning by post ID and we're ordering by bounty amount, that's following the rules I just talked about, where you know we, sh we should have this thing, uh, we should have this equality predicate on vote type ID here, and we're going to partition by post type ID here, and we're going to order by bounty amount descending here, and then we're going to filter on creation date greater, being greater than or equal to here. But when I run this, something kind of not cool happens. Um, I, I highlighted too much and I, I hit an error message. But if I, if I do what I was supposed to do, if I pay attention a little bit, and I run this query, it's, it's not going to be fast. It's not going to return any rows either because I'm playing a mean trick on the optimizer because I'm generating this row number and I'm filtering to where that row number equals zero, but row number doesn't ever equal zero. But the optimizer is just like, yeah, we'll go for it. <laughs> It's kind of goofy. But if we look over at the query plan, well, what do we have here? Big old sort. Big old sort. Look at that. We sorted lots of rows there. And that's after an index seek. And that's, well, we have the seek predicate on on um, on vote type ID, and we have this, this predicate on creation date, but still, we had to sort data. And that's because in, is, even though it's seeking, and even though it seeks twice there, and we have two seek predicates, um, it's, it's like an or, kind of, and uh, that is not so hot at preserving data. If we want to avoid the sort there, we need to change the way that we write the query a little bit. So if we rewrite the query to be one expression where we look for vote type ID equals one, and another one where we look for vote type ID equals three, and we run that exact same query, this will turn out a little bit better for us and that we won't have to sort any data. It'll run, run a bit faster, too, or just about twice as fast. Right? And there's no sort operator in here. So equality predicates can help you navigate indexes a little bit better. Indexes can put data in a helpful order to help you avoid needing to sort things. But sometimes we need to write queries in uh, slightly different ways, slightly less lazy ways that um, that, that aren't always totally intuitive. So there's some unexpected stuff that is, does not produce data in the order that we want it, and that the optimizer is like, mm, we're going we're to have to sort a lot of that data instead. Yeah, so that's that. So now remember, we care about sorts. We similarly, for sim similarly, we care about hashes as well, because hashes uh, are, are similar uh, operators and that they will ask for memory grants, but typically not size of data memory grants the way that, um, the way that sorts will. But we care about memory-consuming operators because they ask for memory grants. Memory grants will often need to take memory from the buffer pool unless you have lots and lots and lots of memory. Um, when we ask for lots of memory grants at once, we may run out of memory grant space. We may need to, we may hit resource semaphore weights. Um, if queries run and they do not get adequate memory, we may spill to disk, and large enough spills can certainly impact performance. Uh, they can make code sensitive to parameter sniffing, where different, uh, different parameters produ would produce uh, well, we need to process different numbers of rows where we might, might need far more memory to do that in some circumstances. And they're internally blocking, meaning that uh, all the rows have to show up at the sort operator before we can start writing things down. And if we need to sort lots of data, we could, we could be there for a minute when we write all that stuff down in order. So anyway, uh, this is the five billionth <laughs> run through of, of, of this video and I am done with it. I am going to produce this one. I am, hope, I am hopeful that Camtasia will, will mix it in a way that uses both stereo speakers uh, and I will see you over in the next video. Thank you for watching.